Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to understand basic functionalities of Selenium IDE. So basic functionalities of IDE include record and play of the test cases. We are going to record test case on the Firefox browser and we can execute the recorded test cases on the same browser. Also, we can save our script for the future purpose, future execution. We have the functionality of export, like we can convert our script into different programming language and other is debugging. So we are going to see a basic debugging features. First of all, I'm moving to my Firefox browser. So here we have the Firefox browser. Now here, that's my application which I'm going to use. So that's the e-commerce site which we have uh, developed for the testing purpose. Here in the e-commerce site, we have the option of like we can search any items. So I'm searching for iPhone and so here we are going to get a result and we can add to cart, we can perform checkout, we can perform different sorting options. So we are going to test this website. So in previous session, we have already seen how we can set up Selenium IDE on Windows machine or we can say on the Firefox browser. So that's the icon of my Selenium IDE. Before moving, before starting Selenium IDE, first I'm moving to my home page. So that's my home page. That is a prerequisite of the Selenium IDE to open browser and open your website or web application before recording. So now I'm starting Selenium IDE. Here to understand Selenium IDE, first we have a recording option. So here we have a red color button that is called recording button and that is already in the push mode means recording is already started. Now whatever the test case you want to record. So my test case is to search an iPhone, click on the search button, then perform checkout. So I'm going to like recording is already started. I'm going to my search box and typing iPhone. Click on the search button and here we can see a new page is opened. If you move to the Selenium IDE, so few steps has been recorded. Now go to the item which we got after search, click on add to cart. So now one item is added to the cart, we can click on a checkout. So that was my test case. So I have recorded my test case moving to Selenium IDE and here we see few steps has been recorded. If you want to stop the recording, that's the same button I need to push again. So I click on this button and the recording is stopped. So here we have recorded a test case. If you want to execute your test case, so as we know, while recording, the prerequisite was your browser must be open and your website should be open. But in a case of execution, only the browser must be open. So I just open browser and we are on the different website means we need not to start our web application before running so as i click on the run button first it's going to start my url because it holds the url on which you have performed the recording and then rest of the steps will be performed so i click on this run button and here we can notice like first it is starting the application then searching for the iphone then going for the checkout and now it shows two items in there because it performed checkout one item was added when i recorded one more item is added when we run the script so here we can see all the steps are executed successfully and it's showing green and here it also shows that everything ran fine so that we have recorded one test case and we try to execute the test case and it was working fine. Few important options that we need to see like if you want to go for the recording, it's the same button. If you want to stop the recording, we need 
click it on again click on the same button again like if i press it so now it's in a recording mode you can see it's in the push mode and whenever you want to stop recording just click on this again also we have seen like here we have the two run button so as of now i'm using run current test case you can see we have a play current test case option and also so left hand side run button is going to use when we want to execute complete test suite as of now we did not execute a test suite so i'll show you how we can create test how we can execute it as of now we have seen when we executed our test case the speed was very fast if you want to control the speed or you, if you want to slow the speed of execution you can use this slider so i'm using the slider taking it to the slower side and now run it again so now you will see all the steps are executed but with some delay so first it enter iphone now it will take some delay and click on the run button then it will move to the next page so all the steps are executing with some delay because we have moved the slider on a slower side so you can see it click on the search button now it's moving to the next page and once it moved to the next so here we have seen everything ran fine but this time the execution was a bit slow so we have seen basic features how we can record and play now if you want to record one more test case so i'm coming to the file new test case so now new test case is opened again go to their website so my home page web application was this and this time i want to search a samsung phone so i click on the recording my recording is started if you want to increase or decrease of the size of this ide so you can do it i just decrease the size and that's the height i have reduced now i'm searching for samsung items so that's the samsung click on search and here it shows all the items which are related to the samsung i want to add it to the wish list so i just click on this and my item is added to the wish list even you can check it over here it shows one item is here so my second test case is recorded i move to the selenium ide and just stop it so now we have two test cases in our bucket and here you can see both the test cases are here i want to execute this test case i want to check it is running fine or not so i am going to run this again and it will go to the home page will search item and it's going to add my item into the wish list so everything ran fine means it executed all the steps perfectly so now we have two test cases so by this we can record one or multiple test cases we have seen the recording start and stop button also we have seen this run button slider we know with the help of the slider we can control the the execution speed now on the left hand side run button so all the test cases that you have created over here so we call it test suite so in the test suite we have two test cases as of now if you want to execute all the test cases so we can use this left hand side run button all the test cases which displayed on this left side area will be executed in the order in which they are placed so i am going to execute it and here it shows the first test case start executing and then it will move to the next test case so first is searching for the iphone and my case one is executing and the next time it is going for the samsung so my second test case is executing so we have seen how we can record and play one or multiple test cases now moving to my file so we have seen how we can record and play our test cases moving to the next part now i want to save my test cases so here on the file 
we have the option of like first of all i'm selecting this first test case going to the file and save test case so save or save as in both the cases it's going to save my test case in the html language because by default if you go to the source it record the test case with html language so if we save it it's going to save in the html so i'm going to show you how we can save it i'm going to the save test case as and selecting desktop and giving the name tc001 so i have saved one test case on the desktop let's move to the desktop and it shows html file if you want to see the extension we can select it that's a html so we have saved one test case in the same way you can save any number of test cases from here we have seen like when we record our test case so by default it's going to generate code in the html language but i want to generate my code in java or any other language so first of all go to options and here in the options and we need to select this checkbox checkbox is enable experimental feature so click on this and now we can go to the options format so it shows different language options so we are getting the option of the c sharp java python ruby so we can select any of the option here on the each line it shows three items one is the language so means which language you want to work on so whatever the language you want to use you can select it from here if you want to work on the java you can select on this java if you want to work, work on the python you can select python or maybe ruby so whatever the language you want to work on you can select it from here now the last option is you want to work on a web driver or rc so if you want to work on the web driver you can select any of the from the top three and if you want to work on the rc you can select on the bottom three and in the same way it shows for the python like for the python you can select web driver or rc which is remote control in the same ruby we can select web driver or rc so we got understanding of for the first and third option like first is the language and third is the either you want to work on a web driver or rc so now third item so we have seen like while working with the c or c plus plus programming language we we are creating a main method main method is the execution start point same here in java or maybe python or maybe ruby we, we have a main method main met method always shows starting point starting point of the execution but what will happen if you don't have the main method can we execute our code without main method so answer is yes if you want to execute your code without the main method you need some tools these tools are called unit testing tools so here in the middle we are going to get this option of the unit testing tool because when we are working in selenium we are not going to create main method so if you are not creating the main method how you can execute your code so without main method we can execute our code by using these unit testing tool if you talk about the java so we have three unit testing tool junit3 junit4 or testng so while converting our test case in any other language we can select unit testing tool so i'm using unit testing tool which is junit4 so we are going to understand all these tools same like python in python we have only one unit testing tool the name of the tool is unit test so with the help of the unit test we can execute our test case without main method and in the case of the ruby we can select either rspec or test unit so it's up to us like i'm taking the example if you want to work on a java so in java we are going to select the languages java i'm going to select my unit testing tool is junit4 so i'm going to use junit4 for executing our test case without main method and the third and the third option is rc so we are going to execute our test case with rc i just select this and here we can see our code is converted into the java language 
So that's the advantage of the Selenium IDE. We can do some recording. We can convert our test case into the any programming language. And then, so this will be the basic set of test case. We can write rest of the code. And if you want to select in any other programming language, so I'm taking it back to the HTML first. And now I'm selecting like Python. So if you select the Python, the complete code will be converted to the Python. In the same way, if you want to select Ruby, so I'm going to the HTML and then for Ruby, so my complete code will be converted to the Ruby programming language. One most important thing that we need to understand like by default our coding was HTML. So if you select any other language, these all options get disabled means if you want to work on the Selenium IDE, you need to bring your code back to the HTML format. You can copy this code which is Ruby programming language and you can go to the Ruby editor and execute it. But if you want to work on the Selenium IDE, your coding language must be HTML. So I'm selecting the HTML again and here you can see all the options get enabled. Now we have seen few options like we can how we, how we can go for the record and play, how we can save our script and in the case of the save we have already seen it was saving in HTML language. So if you want to save this in Java programming language we can go to the file and we can select option is export. So export test case in Java programming language if you are working on the Java, Python, if you are working on the Python then Python or Ruby. So like I'm taking example I'm working on the Java so select Java and you want to work on the remote control which is RC or web driver. So if I'm working on the Java web driver. How you want to execute your test case without main method. So without main method I'm going to use the JUnit 4. So we can select this JUnit 4 option. So the first option of the Java I'm going to select. As I click on that option, it's asking for the name, I'm giving the name TC0011. I saved it and I'm moving to the desktop. So you can see a Java file is saved. If you want to open it, I can show you. I'm going to open it with WordPad. So here we can see a complete code is saved into Java programming language. So we got the difference between save and export. In case of the save, we can save the test case, but the language will be default language, which is HTML. But in case of the export, you can export the test case. You can save test case in any other programming language. So till this point, we are clear about how we can go for the record and play how we can save our test case, how we can export our test cases. Now I want to show you basics of debugging. So debugging means like if I'm executing our test case and we are getting some errors. So I want to find out the point on which error is coming. So for debugging, we need to execute our test case step by step. To, to execute your test case step by step, we have two different options. So first I'm going to show you pause option as I run it. So this pause button gets enabled. So whenever you pause it, your execution will pause on a specified point. So now my execution is paused on this point. Here you can see iPhone is typed because this step is executed, but it is not clicking on this search button just because the execution is paused. Now, if you want to execute your test case step by step, here is the step button. As we click on step, it will execute one step. If you click on it again, it will execute one more step. So by this way, we can execute our step, our test steps one by one. So debugging, debugging is the process to find out the point of error. We can find out a line in which error is coming. And to perform the debugging, we can go for pause so we can click on the pause we can pause the execution and then execute the line step by step so we can find out line in which error is coming also at any point of time if you want to execute rest of the line in one go so you can use this button again 
so it was a pause button now it's a resume so as you click on the resume button it will execute rest of the lines in one go one thing need to be noticed you can use this pause button only when you have started your execution so only you start the execution then this button is going to be enabled so when you click on this execution will pause if you want to execute single line you can click on this step button if you want to execute all rest of the lines you can click on this resume button we have one more option for that like if you want to pause your execution on this step 2 you can select the step 2 you can go to the actions and toggle breakpoint so toggle breakpoint is used to pause the execution at predefined step so now we have added a toggle breakpoint on this step 2 if we execute this my execution will go and pause on a particular step now again you want to execute one line then you can go to the step and if you want to go to the all the lines you can use this resume if you want to remove this toggle breakpoint you can select the step and again select toggle breakpoint so here we have seen the difference between the toggle breakpoint and pause toggle breakpoint can be placed before execution like here we did not start execution we can select any step and we can add toggle breakpoint and if you want to remove the toggle breakpoint you can select a step again and remove this toggle breakpoint but if you want to use the pause then we have to start the execution first and then we can pause even use of both the options is same like both the options are used for debugging but the difference is that toggle breakpoint is placed before execution pause button is used after execution so everything ran fine and here we have seen everything is working fine in the last we need to understand one of the most important thing like here we can see in the table format we have three columns so one is the command other is target and value so command we can understand it like different operations which we are going to perform like you want to perform click you want to perform right click double click type so whatever select so whatever the operation you want to perform this command shows that operation value whatever the data you are giving from the keyboard that will be stored in this value so here you can see in the case of the click we are not giving any data from the keyboard so the value is blank most important part is target so element locator which we are going to understand in a coming sessions element locators to locate an element to search an element we are going to place that element locator here in the targets so we need to understand this target very carefully because it's one of the most important part while working with the selenium so that's all we have for the selenium ide session and here we have seen how we can go for the record and play we can record our script and we can play our script but only on the firefox browser we can save our script but while saving it is going for html format if you want to save in java python ruby we have to select export option and at the end debugging with the help of the debugging we can find out the point of error so if you are executing our test case on the selenium ide and if you are getting some error in our test case so we can use debugging for that we are going to cover expert level debugging while working with the java programming language so that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video